C. That no one misleads you. The Bible is clear that the last days will be filled with false teachers, deception, mockers, lawlessness, those who love themselves, those who will be unloving and unholy, those without self-control, those who will pretend to know God, yet they are simply whitewashed tombs. There will be no great end times revival, just a great last days deception. Scripture warns that people will creep into their churches unaware. Who are those creeping in and why are they doing it? The church in the last days will be full of compromise, deception, and a lack of discernment. Life clips will contend earnestly for the faith as Jude 3 instructs. Warning, the red light has been turned on. Grab your Bible. It's time to expose the dark. Due to the Fair Use Act, I will be giving a little bit of commentary here this week as well. This is something new because a lot of these false teachers don't like the fact that I'm calling them out and they have been putting hard strikes on my channel. So with that being said, this week's RLE is what we call low hanging fruit. Meaning we should know who's false. We really should. I don't have to call out Sid Roth or Benny Hinn or Joel Osteen. We, we should know that these people are false teachers. And if we don't know that by now in 2023, well, this podcast is certainly not for you. No bones. Without further ado, let us please bring in this week's low hanging fruit. I was 17 years old, I laid down and went to sleep. And while I was sleeping, I dreamed. I was reading a verse that I didn't know existed at the time. God was saying to a young man, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, or I, I ordained thee and I sanctified thee to be a prophet. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I know T.D. Jakes is old, but if he was sanctified to be a prophet, does that mean brother was born like in 3000 BC? Because, mm, no, TD, no, no, you weren't sanctified to be a prophet. That's not really how this whole pastoral bishop thing w w works, but sure. Maybe he's getting senile in his old age. To the nations. And when I woke that morning, I just took my Bible with with childlike faith and just let it fall open and it fell open on jeremiah and he said before i formed thee in the belly i knew thee and i ordained thee and i sanctified thee to be a prophet unto the nations at no point in your rambling incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought the cure for your exhaustion is intimacy with Jesus. That's the cure, y'all. I'm saying, I agree. Take the holiday, take the vacation, tell them you need a little sabbatical, you gotta step back for just a little bit, you need a little margin in your life. Take the holiday, but don't take a holiday from Jesus. Don't take the sabbatical from your relationship with the Lord. Prayer shouldn't exit your schedule because these are your rest days. You still need to be the deer that pants after the water. Your soul has still got to be replenished and can only be replenished when you have intimacy with him. Priscilla is one of those who I deem as dangerous fruit. Because even listening to that snippet, you're thinking, well, that's absolutely true, Kim. Right, I need to replenish. So, yes, does it sound good? Well, notice the stage she's on, first of all. Uh, that would be Joel Osteen's church. Again, he's like a low-hanging kiwi. <laughs> uh, anyway, so with that being said, Priscilla is one of those, although she is low-hanging fruit, 
she is massively deceptive. And you're trying to figure out, Lord, you told me that I was going to be replenished. You told me that I was going to be re refreshed. You told me that you had something that you wanted to give to me. Why would you take me here to this place where I'm being pressed down by a multitude of issues and concerns and frustrations? There's something overwhelming me that is bigger than what I feel like I have the capacity to handle. Why would you bring me here? This tells us that the story of the feeding of the 5,000 is not just about the 5,000. It's also about the disciples. It's not just about the multitude getting fed. It's about the disciples being fed physically, spiritually, emotionally. And it tells us that the five loaves and the two fish are the gift to the multitude. This is where the confusion comes in, the twisting of scripture. I personally have no idea what she's talking about. That is literally not the story of the five loaves and two fish right five fish two loaves the five loaves and two fish that is not the story priscilla but what they have to do here is they have to deceitfully weave in a story from the bible to fit your agenda and you know what bothers me the most and this may upset some and i know i just garnered a few new subscribers if you're still journeying with me almost a month later hats off to you but this is where we get confused on who God is. God does not, hear me and hear me well, God does not need to do one more thing for us since he sent his son to die for humanity. After the death on the cross from that point forward, if God did nothing else for me, that would be enough. But it's the multitude that's the gift to the disciples. Ron, why did you say that? Why? Because the multitude is what's going to make them have to finally open up their drawer. <laughs> uh. Pull out the treasure that they would have otherwise ignored. Place it in the hands of a multiplying master who's going to show them what it looks like when he takes their little bit and makes it a lot. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. This way, even to come into agreement that this is just the way things are always going to be. There are people in this room who didn't even realize it, but because you stopped fighting to change, you came into agreement with the very thing that is trying to destroy you, the very thing that is trying to restrict you, the very thing that is trying to limit you. Sometimes we get a word from God, we leave here, we ready to fight whatever is coming up against us. Ready to go to war with it, ready to overcome it, ready to get the therapy, to do the tools, to take the number out our phone, to block it, to get off of social media, to start the business. I read somebody's mail right there. You got a fresh revelation again. So this here is uh, T.D. Jake's daughter who is now taking over the church and we're gonna see some clips on that. But more heretical teaching, but would you expect anything different with her sitting under a heretical teacher, her dad, for decades? I don't think so. So this is what we're seeing in our churches today. God is all about us. Like, what can God do for me? Do for me, Lord. What about me, Lord? You need to be there for me. You need to do A, B, C, and D for me. Oh, poor pitiful me. I, that is not how God operates. That is lessening who God is. To me, God is holy. To me, God is sovereign. And more importantly, God is the one who sits on the throne, who from before time even began until the end, he, he, he sees it all, he knows it all. I, I don't need therapy. I don't need to block any numbers from a phone. It's not about 
me. Being in here with your baby, because I hear God saying that when you get your breakthrough, you're holding her breakthrough in your arms too. I want to give you some hope in this place that what God's going to do through your life is going to echo throughout their life. And when you get finished echoing throughout their life, I hear God saying that she's never going to know the pain that you knew. She's never going to know the breakdowns that you knew. She's never going to know the betrayal and the rejection that you knew because you made it a point to get in a place of your own healing and I want that to be somebody else's word in this place that if you could just get in the right atmosphere where I hear miracles are happening I hear that the tide is changing I hear that God is doing something new as a matter of fact if God has done something new in your life I want you to just take 10 seconds and make some noise <laughs> Divine reset a lot of times, I mean, sorry, divine disruption. Disruptions in our life are God's, um, God is wanting to reset us and uses the disruption to do that. Can you talk about what that, that means? Yeah. <clears throat> God creates or allows confusion, chaos, trouble, because he's trying to get things that are either out of order back in order or to take us to a new level. Hebrews chapter 12 talks about God shaking things mm -hmm. in the physical because he wants to do something in the spiritual. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so when there is disturbance in the five senses of our lives, in the environment of our lives, in the chaos of the culture, it is because he is shaking things to remake something in its proper order. Things have gotten either out of order or there is a new purpose that he is moving to. And so he will, he will allow Pharaoh to get tougher mm. so that you can leave Egypt. <laughs> so I do realize a lot of people like Tony Evans, I am not one of them, that of, of course these, these are his kids sitting around. So with that being said, God, that's not how God operates y'all. Okay, God is already at the end of time. I can't emphasize that enough. He is already there. It's not like when you're telling me, Tony, that now, oops, God has to, I got to change all of this. It's already written there. It's already, that foundation is already laid. I, I hope that makes sense. I, I don't know how else to say that because I don't want to sound like God is a God of confusion or chaos or he he, he's a God that never changes. So when someone says this, they're saying that, oops, God is like, mm, you know, that was plan A when I wrote that in the books one billion, million trillion years ago. I'm just going to go ahead and now create chaos and I'm going to change my mind. That, my friends, is not biblical. Let's just mention the first red flag at all of these clips. Some of them are from TBN, Total Blasphemy Network. So there goes that. But this next clip, in case you're wondering why I'm showing this older clip here, is Priscilla Shriver is a false teacher. I believe her dad, Tony Evans, is as well. Again, they come with a really great message, but when you deep down dive this stuff, you'll realize none of it lines up with the word of God and that's what we as Bereans need to do so now T.D. Jakes clearly it's a younger T.D. Jakes you're gonna see who he's gonna pass and give and talk and do all this new age mumbo jumbo uh, transference to and maybe then you guys will understand why I have such a passion to call out falsehood they may seem really good on the surface, but underneath it all, demons are in the realm of whatever they do and whatever they say. And as the Bible says, the devil masquerades as an angel of light, and the devil himself has workers of righteousness. The anointing of the Lord be upon you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I pray and declare it now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want to touch and agree with you that the power of God releases that that's in you like you have never seen before. As this video plays, please go ahead and look who starts 
looking quite familiar in his audience. Well, it's none other than Priscilla. She would be, I believe, to the left of your screen. Mind you, she is eagerly waiting to get a touch from her guru. I lay hands on you now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That on the inside will manifest on the outside. In the name of Jesus, I praise you for it. I thank you for it. Not glory glory in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus somebody point at him and just start praising god for victory right now in jesus name paul come here i want to pray for you Another example of the guru and their demonic language. And when he gives you clarity, you're going to move out and the anointing of the Lord. Come on, come on, give God praise, give God praise. God did not bring you here for the 80, but the 20. You have the 80. You always did. He came to give you the 20. Just a few little things that are missing. But the 20 feels like 80. And God has brought you for finishing touches. There's something going to happen in the spirit, in the Holy Ghost, in the essence of you that's going to fill a void down inside of you that adds to the 80 you already have. But you are so hungry because the 20... And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. It's like 80 because you are so aware that God wants to take you to another dimension, to another dimension, to another dimension. To another dimension. And you're hungry for it and not everybody can impart it to you, can impart it to you, can impart it to you. But I have something to give out. Oh, I have something to release upon you. And as I lay my hands upon you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, uh, this is not in a book. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? This is not in a book. This is glory. It's a transference of spirit. 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 This is not in a university. This is a transference of anointing. 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 From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Receive. Somebody. This next clip, I need to keep it in its entirety. T.D. Jakes is borderline blasphemic. I don't even know what you want to call this here, but him comparing himself to what he's going to read in the book of John. I need for you to please listen to what he says and why he's saying what he says. This is disgusting, heretical, and this is the reason a T.D. Jakes will be left behind. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. And the word was God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Watch this closely. Now there was a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He was not that light but sent to bear witness of that light saying there is one coming after me who is mightier than i his shoes i'm not worthy to let you i have indeed baptized you with water but he will baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire in the third chapter of the Gospel of St. John, verse 27 through 30, he continues his dialogue by saying, John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Wait a minute. You can receive nothing, nothing 
except it be given you from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I am sent before him. He that have the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He says, I'm not jealous. He said, if I'm the friend of the bridegroom, then I would not be jealous. You can't be jealous of people you love. He says, he must increase that I must, that I might decrease. This transitional moment, this transfer moment, woman thou art loose comes to an end today. But that does not mean that there is not something next. Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts. When you stand and walk to this stage, you're walking into your destiny. Your future, your calling, your purpose, your giftings. Stand up, girl. This is your moment. Walk to this stage. I read the scripture in John because when Jesus came along, John was the man. He had the crowd, he had the name, he had the audience. Stop it, get some help. He had the power, he had the brand, he had the brand. It's quite pungent. He was unique, he was authentic, he was creative. Jesus said there was none like John. But the truth of the matter is, God gave John his platform so that he would be smart enough to know when to pass it on. You embarrassing yourself. And after 30 years of ministering woman art loose and 45, 46 years of preaching the gospel, Lies. Oh, lies! The time has come that I must decrease that you might increase. Boy, have you lost your mind because I'll help you find it. <laughs> this is not an inheritance. This is a calling. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. You are not standing on this stage for family legacy. If you didn't have the oil, you would not be standing here. They tell you lies. So this part here goes on for a little bit and I'm fast forwarding it, but I wanted to make sure that I saved the last part. Again, new age, transference of kundalini energy. You're gonna see that take place here. I don't know what's more disturbing, the fact that people actually still follow T.D. Jakes and of course his daughter, Sarah, or the fact that the crowd is cheering, allowing T.D. to butcher scripture john the baptist folks let's be real i know i inserted memes john the baptist was none of what he said john the baptist had a brand what brand was it was he branding locusts and honey or maybe it was his attire 
complete blasphemy, complete, utter blasphemy, and complete disrespect for God's holy word. But let's get to this final part, and we will end the RLE for this week. I want you to kneel on this altar. For it is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. It is not by DNA, it is not by birth order, it is not by favoritism or nepotism. If I did not know that the hand of the Lord was on you, I would never do this. <laughs> As Samuel's horn of oil. That doesn't make sense. Anointed David, I so anoint you. Keep going, do it again. Keep going, do it again. And with every drop of oil. Keep going, do it again that falls upon your head. Keep going, do it again. May the strength and the power of the almighty God rest upon you. Rest upon your life. Rest upon your life. Send in the Life. I want every woman in this room to lift up your hands and receive the anointing of God. Because when you leave this place, I expect you to do exploits. I expect you to be an overcomer. I expect you to go forth and be whoever God created you to be. <laughs> it includes you. It is time for every woman in this room to evolve into your destiny. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm just not sure about that right now. Lift your hands and open your mouth and receive the anointing of God as it overshadows you. 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 It overshadows you.